today we are here as a counseling psychologist uh, together with our deputy governor uh, being led by our our counseling psychologist uh, leader that is Dr. Susan Getao trying to find ways on mitigating uh, the deaths that are occurring in our county and the, as well as in our country to find whether if we, if we come together we'll find ways in, uh, in interfering and also we'll find ways in curbing the, the deaths that have been happening. And we believe that uh, we are going to lobby for counseling centers and also for rescue centers so as to have uh, places where people can go and uh, for counseling and we're also trying to find ways of, find ways of, uh, of uh, highlighting more about uh, the importance of counseling in one's life and as I can say also in my life it has also helped me a lot so I know the importance of it if, I, if when I'm talking about it and uh, if we enlighten people and we sensitize people on counseling issues they're going to seek it and some of the deaths will be curbed and some of the violences that are happening in the home people will have somebody to lean on somebody to listen to them that is in a counselor and you know in counseling we have these uh, the counseling uh, the, the, the counseling ethics that we use that is uh, if you go for counseling you won't have uh, somebody talking back about you somebody backstabbing you and in this way we believe that people will be able to open up in confidence because we also embrace confide confidentiality and we are going to curb what is happening for me i must say that uh, my counseling came in at the right time and as a disguise to me because uh, when my husband got sick he was affected that is both in a, a psychologically also in our personality changes he got them and uh, counseling really helped me to walk through this journey and uh, it helped me a lot because uh, I could try to meddle to moderate and also when I felt I was down I had somebody I could go and talk to somebody who never judged me somebody who really supported me and somebody who kept it in confidentiality and that is why maybe somehow I came out strong and, and I thank God for that. So all I can say is that let people embrace counseling, it's very helpful. We are planning also to start in sensitizing people that if you identify somebody, or maybe even online it's your friend you've seen such an odd remark, you can refer them to somebody and you'll reach out to see that everything is okay. And in that way we are going to curb some of the suicides that are happening and also in the, the GBV, in the families, the things that are happening there. We can intervene, given the, the, given the right referrals, we can work on that. We are here because we are responding positively to the rising cases of suicide in Kiambu County, the rising cases of GBV or gender-based violence and uh, sexual assault and all violence that is related to children, girls, boys and women in the county. We are also here because we realize as a county we have the largest number of professional counselors and psychologists in Kiambu County who are all over in the media. Unfortunately, we don't have a system that is working to ensure that we reduce the burden of mental health in the county. I know the Teacher Service Commission has already done a little bit, but we are saying it's never enough and it's never too late to improve what you've already done. But right now we are having rising cases of mental health illness in schools. Talk of the teachers, talk of the support staff, talk of the students, because it's not just about educating that student. You need to know who are you educating. Uh, just like we are saying, development, when you have road constructions, we have building coming up, institutions coming up, very good learning institutions, and we don't have learners who are mentally healthy, then it's all good for nothing, because we're gonna have them educated today, trained today, and tomorrow we lose them either through suicide mostly or drug and substance abuse addiction. So I would want to appeal to all the teachers, especially the principals, before you send that child away, before you suspend them for two weeks, that is the formal uh, uh, timeline, before you suspend them, probably indefinitely, before you call the board for this student, kindly refer them to the counselor. Because some of them, especially those who have self-mutilation, in the real sense, they have deep depression, they have deep trauma. And when they come to us, we are able to unearth what lies deep within. So those are the students that you sometimes say they are in cultic activities. No. We want those students that you have also said during this period of COVID-19 that they have become lesbians and gays. We want to tell you, these students have stories to tell. 
And so long as they are adolescents, they have not crossed over 25 years, it's very easy to help them realign their sexual orientation. It's very easy to help them realign their sexual concept. The good thing with uh, the armed forces, I'm talking about the police, I'm talking about the military and all cadres of police, it's important that we know mental health assessment is important when we are recruiting them, when we are churning them out, when they are passed out, and they are actually posted in different locations, because some of them, it's normally a big scare. It's a panic that I had very good time, maybe during the training, my character was built, but where I was posted, maybe I was posted in a high volatile uh, location, and nobody is there to help me to sober up and to stabilize myself mentally. So we are actually saying, anybody who is being licensed to have a gun, they not only did the psychiatric assessment, they need a counselor's assessment. A counselor's assessment goes beyond one hour. It can even go to two hours. And what is not written in the checklist, we can have you speak it out. We use neuro-linguistic programming where you're looking at somebody as they're talking and you can tell when they're lying to you and not lying to you. So we would want to be put in that group of assessors before people are licensed so that we can have a mentally stable gun holder who will not endanger the lives of others, including their own life and the lives of their loved ones. A lot has increased, a lot of mental illness has come because of the poverty levels. Many people have lost their jobs, and once they lose their jobs, back there at home, they also argue within the families, they will have a lot of drinking because of the idleness now that they are not going to work. And this automatically has raised the level of mental illness, a lot of depression actually has been created out of the pandemic that we've been having. Our biggest desire and our biggest plan that the country would open rescue centers to rescue those who are suffering cancer in centers and even rehabilitation centers so as to help those who are suffering and they're not even able to treat themselves because of financial constraints. Once we roll out on this program, uh, going to assist, we'll handle each and every department, starting with our institutions, to visit to our institution and to speak to our young people, to empower them and to enlighten them on how to handle different cases, different levels of stress, so as we can be able to minimize this menace. Actually, we cannot separate mental illness and alcohol and drug use, because an alcoholic or a drug user has either had a mental illness before they start using, and they started using because of self-medicating themselves, or the use of the, med of the drugs and alcohol has developed a mental illness to the person. And some of these mental illnesses are the depressions, the schizophrenia, and whatever is now going, progressing to leading into suicide. The two are actually inseparable. Because most people in depression will look for medication in drugs and in alcohol. They are too much related. About the stigma, the stigma is one thing that has made our people suffer most because we believe in what society wants. We believe the standards set by the society, like I cannot live without children. People will, what will people say? If I talk about my drinking child, what will people say? If I talk about my husband beating me, they will talk about me. They will say, like, I'm not complete. So we had so much delight by the society and the stigma has so much created such that when the people suffer, they suffer within themselves, suffer inside, lock themselves and finally commit suicide because they have lost hope completely. Therefore, it's a call upon our people to stop stigmatizing and let people believe whatever you go through is being gone through by others and there is nothing big or there is nothing abnormal like a family is being beaten, if you're beaten by your husband, quit. Quit, get out of that relationship. We fear that the church is going to condemn us. Just quit and save your marriage and save your children.